Today I'll provide an audio description of an artwork called Bull by the artist Juan Soriano. Juan was a Mexican artist who was born in 1920 and died in 2006. He was the kind of artist that dabbled in a little bit of everything, from painting to theater sets, and then, in the last two decades of his life, sculpture. He had a special interest in monumental sculptures of animals, which are in various public spaces in Mexico and Europe. The larger version of the sculpture I'm describing today, El Toro, is at the Tomás Carrillo Cannibal Park in Villa Hermosa, Mexico. With these sculptures, Juan was interested in making animals like bulls and birds more abstract yet romantic and playful. I'll try to capture the scope and feel of the sculpture in my description today. This is a horizontal sculpture of a bull made out of bronze. It's 27 inches by 23 inches by 73 inches, which means that it's over six feet long. It was purchased in 2017 with funds given by the family of a former museum trustee, Robert Ott, in his memory. I'll start from the head of the bull and work my way all around the sculpture. Overall, this sculpture has a lot of heft and thickness to it. Bulls are not small animals to begin with, but Juan paired a heavy material like bronze with a bulky and toned composition. But he took some liberties with how he sculpted this bull. Starting with the head, there are horns jutting out and up on each side, but only five or six inches up. The eyes stick out horizontally from the surface of the head, and a long snout that looks more like a pig's nose. The bull's spine is connected to the top of the head in an exaggerated manner, creating an arched back that extends half the length of the sculpture. The front legs lay flat on the ground and loop forward. On the left side here, it's like the shape of a letter J. The hooves kind of look like the claw of a hammer, the part you would use to pull a nail loose. On the left side of the body, there are toned curves showing off a lean figure. Throughout the whole sculpture, there are little marks that add a nice contrast to the smoothness of the bronze. The hind leg is more of a right angle, from underneath the foot to the back of the leg, but the front part of the leg swoops down and up. From the rear view, it seems as though the bull's weight is leaning on its left hind leg more than the right hind leg, because the body seems to be dipping down to the left. The bull's tail is curved at the top, but angles down sharply and rests on the pedestal rather than hanging out into the air. The end of the tail is thicker and heavier, almost like it's a fifth leg. This angle also shows us how narrow the body of the bull is compared to the legs. On the right side, the composition is almost identical to the left side, with a thicker, right-angled hind leg, a defined body and belly, and a more slim and curvy front leg. There's also the S-shaped curves of the body that curve up from the tail, plateau at the back, and then curve up high before dipping sharply down to the back of the head. But let's go back to the hind leg on the right side, where Juan signed the sculpture. He signed his last name, Soriano, above the inscription PA, which is an acronym for Prueba de Artista, or Artist Test. Artists make these inscriptions when they are testing an idea, so it's likely that this sculpture was one of a series of test sculptures for a larger work of art. The I is the Roman numeral for one, and probably means that it was the first in the series, but it's not clear how many tests Juan did of this toro. Following that is the year of creation, 2004. Head on, it appears that the bull's head is leaning toward its right, and it's a bit easier to notice that the bull's belly dips all the way down to touch the pedestal that the sculpture is resting on. So if the hind legs are dipping toward the left, and the head is leaning toward the right, it suggests to me that this bull might be ready to make a move. Juan's animal sculptures didn't always have a specific meaning, even if he tended to sculpt animals that had a prominent place in Mexican culture, like the bull. This one is a good example of how he made changes to the shape to make it more abstract, yet still recognizable. So based on what I've described today, what kind of qualities or meaning does this bull have to you?